Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's read a Psalm of David, chapter number 37, starting in verse 1. I guess we'll read the whole thing. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. What's iniquity? Great evil. Verse 2. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, when you delight yourself in the things of God, God will give you the things that he wants you to have. Doesn't mean uh, you're going to get the things that your flesh wants, but... If you delight yourself in the Lord and the things of the Lord, he'll give you the, thi the things that of his that he wants you to have. And that is so true. Verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. Hmm and thy judgment as the noonday. You notice all the evil stuff always happens in the dark because evildoers don't want to be in the light. They don't want to be identified. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices, to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Boy, that's. Let's take a look at that real quick. Forgiveness. Do you know a lot of people will probably not make it into the kingdom, even though they believe because they will not allow forgiveness in their heart. And let me tell you something. It's, you know, you think of people that are done things against you and, you know, it's hard to forgive sometimes. And I'm not talking about, uh, there's a difference between us forgiving our enemies and us forgiving the enemies of the Lord. We have absolutely no right to forgive the enemies of the Lord. I mean, I'm I can't forgive Satan for what he anything that he's done. That's I mean, I've I've heard people that have been brainwashed by pastors that tell them, well, we gotta forgive everybody. Uh, you know, there's a difference between forgiveness and stupidity. If somebody kills somebody in your family, you're going to forgive them and let them do it again? Kill another member? I, I don't think so. That's not forgiveness. That's stupidity. Okay, but I'm talking about somebody that, you know, let's say they stole something from you. You know, you're supposed to forgive them. And how many things have we done against the Lord? So, you know... I've done so many, so much evil in my life. I, if the Lord can forgive me, I can forgive people the stupid things that they've done to me. So, But let's read Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14. Jesus speaking. If ye forgive, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. 
So we have to forgive to be forgiven. That's a very, very important doctrine, if you ask me. All right, let's go back to Psalms 37. Verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, where have we read that before? Inheriting the earth. Well, let's take a look. Matthew chapter 5. Sermon on the Mount, right? Matthew 5.5 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Hmm. You know, in Psalms 37, chapter 11, it says basically the same thing. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of of peace. All right, let's go back to Psalms 37. All right, so verse 9, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Isn't Christ called the Prince of Peace? It's not there yet, but it's coming. And I know it's probably been almost almost 2,000 years since Jesus said these were uh, the words about in Matthew 5:5 5, 5, about the meek inheriting the earth. And everybody says, well, you know, yeah, a little while, right? But there's a verse in Scripture. Now let's take a look at it. Uh, let's take a look at 2 Peter verse 3, chapter 3 and verse 8. 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. To the Lord, pff, thousand years is like a day. So basically, when he says, up oh, soon evildoers are going to be cast away, destroyed. To him, it's just, you know, a couple of days. But uh, a lot of people will tell you that Second Peter doesn't belong in the Bible, that it's a fraud, and that Peter didn't write Second Peter. Don't listen to those people. They're liars. They're of their father, the devil. Okay. Back to Psalms 37, verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. Yeah, the Lord laughs. The Lord's going to laugh at him. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Whose day? the day for the wicked to be cast away. Verse 14, The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. Wow. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of of many wicked. Yeah, tell that to the Rockefellers. Verse 17. 
for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Boy, that's, that's today, people. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. In other words, they're not going to go hungry. Read Matthew 24 sometime, or Mark 13. There's famine coming, people. Jesus warned about famine coming. But God's people, they're going to be satisfied with bread and with food. And I believe that uh, those that God chooses that escapes the end times beast system, I believe they're going to be fed with manna, just like the children of Israel were in the exodus out of Egypt when they were in the desert. Our ancestors. Did you know that the church was in the wilderness with Moses? Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at Acts chapter 7, and we'll go back to Psalms. I guess we'll start in verse 36. He brought them out. Who? God. God brought them out. Israel. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Did you know, it says right here in verse 38, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel that spoke to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto him. The church was with Moses when they came out of Egypt, if you believe Acts chapter 7, and I do. All right, let's go back. Psalms 37, verse 19 they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. I'm sorry, they shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. They're going to be burned up, people. Verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Do you know that God directs the steps of good people? Read it again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Boy, that's good news for me, because I've fallen a few times. Well, I'm being very generous when I say a few times. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Huh, I could have wrote, written that. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. 
He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Oh yeah, people, that's coming. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. How long is forever? Forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Oh boy, ain't that the truth. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. All right, verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is Christ. In his precious name, amen.